kicked and screamed and pled, hiding under your bed, Valorant to dread, it's read by the dead. Skipped your daily bread, courage up and fled, the pages here are bled. It's read by the dead. A dark greeting to you, my friend. Welcome to the back of beyond. This is read by the dead. A place where man's evil deeds live in brass. And his virtues are written in what? Tonight's story beckons from a place between worlds, somewhere betwixt truth and fiction, from that mysterious and lost locus between the living and the dead. Like a smooth shadow reflected in the soft glass of a dusty mirror, our story begins. Many years ago, on the other side of town, out past the raven's wood, there was an elderly man who lived in a big old estate house on top of a hill. ago, on the other side of town, out past the raven's wood, I lived in a big old estate house on top of a hill, its weathered peaks and turrets rising out of a maze of thorns, like giant looming gravestones. My beloved wife had died, yet I remained in the house. In all my years there, I had always felt some other inexplicable presence. Some unannounced tension that secretly threatened to break the silence of an otherwise peaceful room. I was always able to ignore this feeling while my wife was alive. But now I was all alone, and I couldn't just wish it away any longer. As my days wore on, my awareness of the presence crept until it became all I could think about. My mind softened to every terrible possibility. Then, something strange began to happen in that house. One evening, preparing for bed, I opened my bedroom door. I paused for a second and listened, only to hear the nearby bathroom door gently close. It went as the picture frames bumped on the walls. Alert but not alarmed, I ignored this strange happening. I was not a superstitious man. The house is old, I thought. Its floors are sagging. Its walls are warped. The weight of the doors on their hinges are uneven. That's all. But the occurrences continued, and they became closer and harder to ignore. As I opened my bedroom door each morning, the door at the end of the hall would slowly close, right before my eyes. The bright light shining from the next room was sliced into shadows, shifting and retreating like the waning moon, leaving me standing alone in the darkness. Again I tried to ignore this strangeness and go about my life. But my ignorance did not serve me, nor did my patience delay my fate. Soon I made a frightening discovery. My heart sank as I realized what it meant. 
Not only did a door close elsewhere in the house whenever I opened one, but each morning I found that a new door had been closed during the night. Paranoia played on my mind. To be sure, I counted every door in the house, and sure enough, my worst fears were true. There were 23 doors. Ten had been opened the night before. Now there were nine. This meant that no matter which doors I opened, the same number of doors were always closed, and each morning I had one less open door to work with. Day by day, door by door, the house was closing in around me. Whenever I would come, something else would go. I felt watched. I kept my true intentions and fears inside, but my actions betrayed the internal conflict I was no longer able to hide. I faked an air of casual indifference in resisting the house. Under the guise of renovation, I tried calmly nailing the doors open with spikes and lumber, only to find it all vanished the next morning. All that remained were the holes in the walls that once contained my nails. I thought of removing the doors, but I was apprehensive. It seemed risky. I was conflicted. I told myself I wouldn't remove them because I didn't want to give in to this delusion, that this was really happening. In truth, I was afraid of what would happen if I took them down. I was scared. I was at a loss about what to do. My unshakable resolve was straining and fracturing into one of self-doubt and irrational fear. No matter how many times I wandered the empty halls, opening the doors, just to prove I still could, it was always matched by an... somewhere else in the house. The curtains hung heavily. Quietly, I wept as the house seemed to watch me. I wept for my wife. For my previous life. For a time before the doors. I thought of leaving, but I couldn't bear to run from the only place I had ever called home. It was my house, after all, and full of the memories of my departed beloved. Besides, I had nowhere else to go. No nearby family, and isolated from the comfort of friends. The long days seemed to slow and cease altogether. Like watching tall trees become a dark forest. I awoke one gray, rainy morning and found myself staring dreadfully at my bedroom door, the last in the house still open. My once loving home was now a maze of sealed rooms. Every room entered was a hinged tomb of darkness where little light shone and shadows were worn like heavy raiments. Every room exited was marked by the ceiling of the room behind me. It was a half-life, a living hell. My thoughts felt invaded. My body felt controlled. My spirit felt betrayed. As my options dwindled out of existence, my mind bucked in my head like a bull tossing its rider. At that moment, I had had enough. Half scared and half crazed, I shouted out to the house. Why do you close the door? Why would I come if you always go? I slammed my bedroom door in anger. A thunderous bang that reverberated through the sagging walls and crumbling plaster, through the dark spaces between floor and ceiling, through the warped floorboards and hunched beams like a spider web plucked. Without warning, the huge wooden house seemed to shift and twist, its dusty dry wood cracking as every one of its heavy doors were blown open with the force of a hurricane. Heavy rain and wind came swirling in, in a sudden torrent of fury. The 
force overwhelm me as I hit the floor in surprise and terror. began. It stopped. I was dazed. I got up from the floor and collected myself, staring in disbelief at shards of broken glass and pools of water dripping and seeping down between the floorboards. But something was different. It took a moment for me to realize, but then for the first time I saw it. A small trap door in the corner of the room. It had been covered by furniture that had been there as long as my aging mind could remember. This little trap door had been blown open in the chaos. I stumbled toward it and peered inside. Black and silent. A cold air rising. Determined and seeking answers, I lit a candle and squeezed my way down into the darkness below. As I examined the cramped chamber with my inadequate light, my eyes caught a strange shimmer reflected in the hinges of the trap door. Just then, in that terrible moment, the hinges creaked and rolled as the trap door slammed close above me with a ferocious bang. I beat furiously against the door, but no one heard. I screamed for help, but no one came. Exhausted and confused, I slumped down into the dusty and rotten bowels of the house. My candle choked and gasped on the stale air of the chamber. As it failed and the darkness filled my eyes, I heard a soft sort of scraping sound, followed by a voice, if a voice it could be called. It was a small, creaking, metallic sort of voice, as if made out of hinges. It said, as you wish, you will come, but this time I'm not going to leave. Nothing living heard my screams. The doors were all closed. Weeks later, the police searched high and low for me, but I was never found. Some say that old estate house still stands, somewhere in the Raven's Wood, beyond a field of thorns. It's the one with the broken windows and the front door always wide open. The wise never seek it. The brave risk more than they know to enter it. It is said that if you go into that house and peer into the shiny brass hinges, it is not your reflection you'll see, but the reflection of those the house has taken.